In this video, I'm going to talk about spherical and cylindrical coordinates in R3, in three-dimensional Euclidean space. These are the two curvilinear, uh, so-called curvilinear coordinate systems. They're analogous to polar coordinates in R2, which more people are familiar with. And they're useful when the functions and problems we want to study exhibit some kind of rotational symmetry. For example, maybe we have a function in R3, um, which depends only on the Euclidean length of its input x. And maybe f is a function of the distance to the origin. In that case, if we perform a rotation in R3, it doesn't change the function f. And we say that f has some radial symmetry or some rotational symmetry. In that case, it might be more convenient to write down the function f to represent it using spherical coordinates. Uh, this allows us to perform computations more quickly and to write problems more simply, and perhaps to see um, what's going on more, more quickly. All right, so let's give a review of polar coordinates in R2. Uh, you recall if you have the typical xy coordinate system in R2, and you have a point xy, uh, represented by this orange dot here. Then if you draw a line from the origin, a line segment from the origin to, uh, to your point, the distance of that line segment is the Euclidean length, of course, of the point. We call that little r. And the angle between the x-axis and this line segment is denoted by theta. And you can observe that any point in the plane can be represented by this r and this theta. If, if, I t if you tell me the r and the theta, then the theta tells me sort of which direction to point my cannon in. And then r tells me the distance that I have to fire the cannonball. And in so doing, I can, I can put a cannonball at any point x, y in the plane. And you can go back and forth between the, 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 the typical rectangular coordinate system and the polar coordinate system of r and theta with the following transformations. First of all, if you know r and theta, then you can get x and y by just uh, writing down r uh, cosine theta and r sine theta. This is almost the definition of sine and cosine. So you should uh, see that. If you have r fixed, then you're going to sweep out a circle, of course. r equals a constant gives you a, a circle. And then the theta tells you which direction to go in. It, it tells you the point on the circle. So of course, if you have the point here on the circle, and this is, it, and this is theta, then the x and y coordinates are r cosine theta, r sine theta. In fact, that's essentially the definition of sine and cosine. OK. To go in the other direction, if you're given x and y and you want to find r and theta, of course, r is just the Euclidean length. We've been talking about how to compute that. It's the square root of the coordinate squared, the, the sum of the coordinate squared. And theta, the angle between the x direction and this line segment, you can, that's also the angle between the i hat vector and this point x, y. And we've learned in the, in the previous lectures how to compute that. It's the inverse cosine of this point x, y dot i hat, which turns out to be x, the first coordinate divided by the, the length of i hat, which is 1, times the length of this vector, which is r. And so you get inverse cosine of x divided by r, which is you can write out here to see the a relation between that and the formula for the angle between two vectors that we've been discussing. OK, and one thing to note is that x and y in the usual rectangular coordinate system are allowed to vary over all real numbers, of course. But r and theta are not. r has to be positive. You can't shoot a cannonball backwards. And the, the direction that you go in theta has to be a number between 0 and 2 pi. So you're a bit restricted. OK, let's move to the cylindrical coordinate system in three dimensions. The cylindrical coordinate system in three dimensions is really just polar coordinates plus the extra dimension. So if you have a point x, y, z, 
what you do is you just delete Z and in that way project down to the XY plane. So you look at the point X, Y, and zero. And you write down the polar coordinates of the point in the XY plane. You find the R, you find the theta. This is the same picture as before, it's just that we've kind of tilted the axes 90 degrees clockwise so that we can see in uh, so that and pulled the x-axis out of the board so that we can see z going up like this okay so the the theta starts at the x-axis and goes counterclockwise towards y that's how you measure theta r is this distance and then what you do is you just specify z which is telling you kind of what height you're in, like what, you know, this point X, Y, Z, um, it does this in the X, Y plane, and then this is kind of what what uh, plane it's in, what, what vertical slice it's in. So in this way, cylindrical coordinates is really not much different than polar coordinates. Okay, so you have the same formulas as before. For example, if you wanted to write R and theta, you would have R equals x squared plus y squared square root or power one half there i essentially ignored z theta has the exact same formula as before inverse cosine of x divided by r where i just defined r above and then you just say z equals z and this r theta z is the cylindrical coordinate system Okay, let's have an example. Suppose that I wanted to express the point 1, minus 1, 5 in cylindrical coordinates. Okay, so maybe I can draw this really quickly. I have the usual x, y, z system. This is y, this is x, and this is z pointing up. Okay, so where is the point? Uh, 1 minus 1, 5. So it's somehow back here. Somehow there. Oops, that's the that's the projection. And the point is, is somewhere up here. Maybe I'll make it look less high. Okay. So this is the point... 1, minus 1, 5. x is 1, y is minus 1, z is 5. Okay, so we should measure the angle in the x, y coordinate system. Maybe I should have drawn this a little bit better, but in any case, we, we measured this angle all the way around to this point. And if you look at this at this in the, just in the xy plane, what you see is this. So now I'm going to look at it in the normal xy plane. This is x, this is y. And so I see this point. Okay, this is 1 minus 1. <clears throat> okay. So obviously this distance here is the square root of 2. And this angle measured around is going to be 2 pi minus pi over 4, because the angle that I'm missing here is 45 degrees, and that's pi over 4. So this angle theta is going to be 2 pi minus pi over 4. And that's 7 pi over 4. Okay, so in cylindrical coordinates, you would say that r is the square root of 2. Theta is 7 pi over 4. And z is 5. So you'll see that in my calculation, I just ignored z more or less. It's, just a, it's essentially just a polar coordinate calculation. Okay, so now we're going to move to the other curvilinear coordinate system in three dimensions. And this one is genuinely three-dimensional. There's not a direct 
two-dimensional analog of it. And this is the spherical coordinate system. So if I have a point x, y, z, we're going to imagine I'm going to come up with a way of telling you where uh, which which point I have. And I'm going to assume that you know what these coordinate axes are. So you know which direction is x, which direction is y, and which direction is z. And I'm going to come up with a new way of telling you the point that I'm standing on without telling you the actual x, y, and z. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you, okay, look straight up in, in the direction of z. And I'm going to tell you the angle. So, so just point your finger straight, straight upward. And then I'm going to say, okay, now move your arm down an angle of phi so that your finger is pointing phi degrees off of straight up. Okay. And now you know that the, the places where I could be is sweeping out a cone. Okay, so I'm somewhere on this cone. Because those are the points that I can point at now if my arm is locked in an angle of phi from the z-axis. Okay, so once your arm is locked there, I'm then going to tell you turn around until in the xy plane your arm is pointing at an angle of theta. Okay, so just forget about the z-axis for a minute and, and orient yourself so that your, your face is pointing this way in the xy plane. Okay, so first take your finger, point straight up, make it drop by phi, by an angle of phi, and with your arm locked there, turn your body around until you're looking at an angle of theta in the xy plane. And now you're pointing in the direction uh, that I'm, um, you're, you're pointing in the exact direction of the point that I'm standing on. And now I just have to tell you how far to go. Uh, you know that I'm somewhere on this, this line. And so then I just tell you go row miles out and you'll find me. Okay, so you specify the angle measured from the z-axis, starting from up. The, med the angle theta in the xy plane uh, measured from the x-axis. Uh, this angle theta is the same angle as in polar coordinates and as in cylindrical coordinates. And then I tell you the distance to go. Okay, rho. Now rho is not r because the r that we had in cylindrical coordinates was the length of the, the projection of the point in the xy plane. Now this is the real Euclidean length of the point in r3. Okay. All right, so one more time. Phi is the angle between k hat and the point, which we know has this formula, inverse cosine of z divided by rho. Second, theta is the same angle theta that we've had in the other two curved linear coordinate systems. It's the angle between i hat and the projection of x, y, z in the x, y plane, the point x, y, z, rho. And this is given by inverse cosine of x divided by r. And finally, rho is just the Euclidean length of the, the point x, y, z, which is the square root of the sum of the squares of the coordinates. Okay, so that's how you go from knowledge of x, y, z to this phi rho theta. But how do you go back the other way? Well, you just kind of invert these formulas. So z is rho cosine phi. That's kind of easy to see from uh, triangles here, uh, from this triangle. Z is, sorry, X is R cosine theta. That's easy to see from this triangle. And from that same triangle, you can see that Y is R, R sine theta. Okay. Now you can write out, you, you can further write out this R, of course, because R is going to be rho sine phi. So if you wish to write it out further, you can write this as rho sine phi cosine theta, 
rho sine phi sine theta. Okay, and that way there's no mention of r, there's only mention of the variables that you are given. Okay, and you can see this relation also from this triangle. Because this distance here from the z-axis is really r. I should really draw it more parallel to r. This makes a right angle there. Okay, let's see an example. So now I have the point 1, 1 squared of 2, and I want to write it in spherical coordinates. So let's compute. First we're going to compute rho. Rho is 1 squared plus 1 squared plus square root of 2 squared, the 1 half. And we see that this is 4 to the 1 half, which is 2. Okay. Now, if you project down to the xy plane, you get the point 1, 1, 0. So theta is clearly 45 degrees, which is pi over 4. So you can just write theta is pi over 4. It's pretty clear. Okay. And now let's look at what this phi is. So let's draw this. Let's take this red triangle here, which I should draw like this. And let's pull it out and put it in a plane and look at it. Okay, so I'm going to, this is going to be sort of the z direction. So I have phi here. Uh, this is the origin. This is square root of 2. This is, well, okay, so what is the distance uh, uh, little r? This distance. It's also the square root of 2. And we know the hypotenuse is, of course, 2. That's good, because that's what we already computed. So our, So this agrees with that calculation. And so we're wondering, what is this angle? And you see at once that this angle is, this is an isosceles triangle, so this is also the same as phi. And therefore, in polar coordinates, we have the point 2, pi over 4, pi over 4. All right, so that's it for this lecture. See you next time.